Good morning, people. Good morning. This is your guy, DLG, repping 2020 vision. And today, I'm going to preview the Arsenal game versus Everton. There's some light for you around my house. Right. Um, yes, we went down to the 11th um, due to Burnley's 3 0 win versus Bournemouth. So that puts Bournemouth in hot water there. They've not been on the best of form of late. And. Um, Possibly Eddie Howe could be under a little bit of pressure, if not the full pressure. But the results need to change for them. But for Burnley, they pick up another fantastic win. And Sean Dice is bound to be pleased with that result. Yeah, yesterday's results uh, at the top end. Tottenham being defeated by Chelsea. I thought Chelsea were valuable for their victory. Oh, I'm hiccuping and burping. Anyway, back to the football. Um, yeah, that's what I'm here to talk about, the football and the Arsenal. Yeah, Chelsea were valuable of their, valuable of their victory. And um, Olivier Giroud, yeah, he got the winning goal. Well, he got the first goal. And uh, the winning goal itself, what a goal. What a strike by Marcos Alonso. He's always got that um, good trusty left foot. And um, yesterday he was unlucky with that free kick um, bouncing back off the bar. And Kovacic tried to um, do the overhead kick. <laughs> oh, wow. 10 out of 10 for um, effort there. Otherwise, um, it's another day. It's another day. For us, we can capitalise. We could possibly go 8th with a victory or ninth with a victory. And that involves going above Everton. And this is going to be a tough, tough game for us. And I mean such a tough game. We have to do our job. We have to pick the best um, 11. And I'm going to go with my um, predict predicted, um, predicted 11 or my 11 that I would start against um, Everton. And to get the job done at the Emirates today. So, yeah, I'm going to go with my starting 11. Right. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, Everton will not be easy. They've, they've got the best um, form guide. They're second in the form guide behind um, Liverpool. And that says a lot since Ancelotti took over. And yet, some of our fans said that he was washed up. He's coming to the um, the end of his career. But yeah, look what he's done with Everton, with the players that he's got. Dominic Calvin-Lewin. He's got players like... He's got with Charleston. He's got, he's got some decent players, if I have to be honest with myself. He has got some decent players. And um, he's moulded them together as a team. And they're doing the business. They're doing well. They're picking up the results. So I can't complain about that. Uh, they come away from home with a lot of confidence. You know, winning the last two league games. And they look very solid defensively. So we're going to have to be on our A game again. So I'm going to go for my starting 11. In goal, Bird Leno. He's kicking from the other night. Showed me that he's improving. He's He made a couple of saves, I think, against Olympiacos. And um, another clean sheet for himself. And the defence in front of the defense in front of him are looking more confident and they have the belief that they can trust him a little bit more. So Bird Leno in goal. The back four, my right back, Bellerin. I think that's a no-brainer. He can offer a lot more going forward, unlike the last game. 
However, I expect him to um, be on his A game because he will possibly come up against Richardson, depending on the formation that um, Ancelotti will use at the Emirates. They won't sit back like Newcastle Everton. So, better in us to understand that um, they will probably come at them on the left and on the right. The centre half pairing. I'm gonna go with. Um, I'm gonna go with. Yeah, I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but I'm gonna go with um, Richarlison. No, Richarlison. I'm gonna go with Mustafi. Richarlison is gonna play against us. <laughs> yeah, Richarlison. I mean, Mustafi will play. As an as a, he'll yeah he'll play as a centre half starting alongside him will be David Luiz. Both of them have improved in their game, their hair game, and um, both of them will look for retribution. Here you go, more light to my viewers. Um, if you've got anything to say, anything to comment about, yeah, and please um, subscribe. And um, while you're watching, please um, smash the thumbs up like button. I'd really appreciate that. If you've got anything to say, um, leave your comments um, below. Uh, <coughs> my left back, I'm going to go with Saka. And DT said it. You know, Tierney and Kalashnikov are going to have to work really hard to get back into the team because he is on form and he's had nine assists. So for me, Bakari, Bakari Saka continues. I mean, I'm picking him based on his form, nothing to do with his dual nationality or whatever nation he wants to play for. But big up Bakaya Saka and big up um, DT for mentioning those stats about Saka. The the formation is 4 2 three, one. so I'm going to go with the two. Granit Xhaka, I think I'll go with Granit Xhaka to keep his place. No, in fact, I'm going to go with Torreira. They're going to be. Um, this is going to be a, a game for him to um, perform in. So Torreira, yeah, you get my, you get my um, vote of confidence. So yeah, you will start when you're someone who's tough, tackling, tenacious, and um, he's going to work his heart out. So Torreira for me. Um, alongside Torreira, I'm going to go with Danny Ceballos. So I'm going to drop Saka for this game and go with Danny Ceballos. I mean, deep line midfielder who can create from a deep from a deep um, pass one deadly pass can open up at the defence and he's got the ability to play in that role the Santa Cafodo role so for me Denis Ceballos will play the three in front on the right brain no brainer again Nicola Pepe he starts on the right for me trickery direct going at defenders strength of skill and the dribbling ability, as I said, um, speed in abundance. Yeah, he has to go on the right. On the other side, another guy who will go on the right, and he on the left, and he, he will work his heart out to help the team. Gabriel Martinelli, you know, off the ball, we know what he can do. On the ball, we know how effective he can be. He's got the pace in the middle. He... For me, he's um, got 10 goals this season and he'll look to get another goal for me. If it was down to me, Danny Ceballos. Um, in the middle, I'll tell you what, I've tried, I've seen Willock in the middle. He goes at defenders, he's direct, but his decision-making has to change, meaning knowing when to shoot and knowing when to pass. So I'm going to go for this one, in, which is going to be interesting. I'm going to put Lacazette there as a num number 10. That's what I will go with. Lacazette as a number 10. Because he can link up play really well. And he holds the ball up um, better than what um, I would say. Aubameyang holds the ball up. But I'll come on to him in a second. Yeah, Lacazette, my reason for him being as a number 10. Uh he will, he will play a pass. I think he can, he's capable of um, looking after himself in that position, playing the pass, performing, and um, he'll get goals. So Lacazette, for me, plays as a number 10. I think he's suited for that 
position and his vision shouldn't give it away too much. My number nine striker it has to be Aubameyang. I mean, the man is just a natural born goal scorer. He's in the box at the right time. And um, the service that will come from Bellerin and Saka will give him an opportunity. So, Lacazette, I mean, Aubameyang playing in front of Lacazette. And I think the combination between the two will work a treat. Well, guys, let me know your starting 11 at the um, comment section at the bottom. And please do subscribe to my um, channel. I'd really appreciate um, the love and the blessing. And I'll appreciate um, the respect that you give for this video. And um, please smash the thumbs up like button. Thank you for listening, yeah? Peace and blessing. I'll see you all at the Emirates soon.